one of the signs of the return of Jesus Christ is a war. Jesus said that there would be wars and rumors of wars. And we already know that war is not only imminent, but it's, it's what's going on. War is happening. War is upon us. It's upon us in a variety of ways. We know right now it, it's November the 26th, 2009, and the United States is involved in at least two military conflicts, one in Afghanistan, one in the country of Iraq. And we know that these things are going to happen. We know that people are going to they're going to clash, they're going to fight with each other to, to the degree that uh, they're going to become violent and they're going to murder and, and, and hurt one another in, in major ways. And so we know war is a part of human existence. It, it's a part of the, the, the sinful nature. James Ford talks about that. But I want to warn of another war that's coming. One that we've seen signs of throughout history, but another war is coming. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus talks about these wars. In verse 7 he says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, diseases, and earthquakes in various or diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So we know that war is imminent. And in verse 9, it reads, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So that is exactly what we expect. We expect the unbeliever and the ungodly who are outside of the house of God to fight against the believer because that's the kingdom of Satan versus the kingdom of God. We know Satan doesn't want the word of God to prevail. But then it goes on to say in verse 10 that because of this persecution, because of this conflict, Verse 10 says, And then many shall be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. This is the war that I'm warning about. This is the war that we have to be wary of. That not only will the ungodly from the outside manifest and begin to harm the believers, but also ungodly men from the inside are, are going to manifest and they're going to harm one, they're going to harm the believer. One thing about the church of God is that it's an assembly of people. The house of God is made up of a mixed multitude. Some of them are believers and some of them are non-believers that profess themselves to be believers. Some people in the house of God are immature believers and still are walking in different ways that they should not, but at the end of their lives will have perfected their, their walk by the grace of God and will look very different toward the end of their life than they do now and so can easily be mistaken for a tear. Matthew chapter 13 talks about the wheat and the tear. He says the wheat are planted by, the, by, by God, by the, by, by the Lord. He says a good man plants the, the wheat but he says Satan, an enemy, while people weren't looking, came in, crept in and he planted tares. The tares represent weed. The tares represent the ungodly. People who look just like the godly, who have a form of godliness, but are denying the power thereof, who are denying the truth, who are denying the holiness of God. We know that in the house of God now, there is so much secular humanism that you can barely tell the righteous from the unrighteous. And by that, when I say secular humanism, I'm talking about a, a, a man-centered gospel, a seeker-sensitive seeker or seeker-friendly work or, or mission, where the mission is not to please the Lord Jesus Christ, but the mission is to please the person. The mission is to please the, the, the congregant. So what that looks like is, we play secular music during different events that we may have because we want to appease the crowd. What that also looks like is we begin to create an environment, an atmosphere that's just like the world's environment or just like the world's atmosphere so as to draw what we would consider the ungodly or so as to appeal to a, a group of people who otherwise wouldn't come into the house of God. That's the mentality that we have. That's the mentality that we maintain. We believe that in order to, to win the world, many of us, many of the, uh, of, of the church 
members and church leaders believe that in order to win the world, you must be like the world. And they use scriptures that say, well, he that wins souls is wise. And they are completely mis representing the word of God which declares that according to Jesus' own words that we must be born again and Peter says we can't be born again of corruptible seed meaning we can't be born again of anything that can deteriorate or that can corrupt and that's exactly what the world is it's a corruptible environment it corrupts the soul it corrupts the body and if we allow it it corrupts the spirit. So we know that the Lord is calling us to a higher place. The word of God says that we shouldn't fashion or shape ourselves according to the former lusts. The word of God says in Romans chapter 12, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you'll be able to prove what is that good, that is acceptable, and that perfect will of God. So unless you're holy, you can't effectively evangelize. Unless you're holy, unless you're pure, unless you're unspotted from the world, according to James, then your religion is vain and defiled. But the problem is, that's the popular move. So this war is going to manifest. Now, let's look at some scriptures that also talk about this war. John chapter 16, Jesus said these words in the first two verses. These things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended or don't be turned off, don't be thrown off, don't be hurt by these things. As a believer, don't allow this to hurt you. They shall put you out of the synagogues. You know, a synagogue is a gathering of worship for Jews. So what are the gathering places of worship for the present day believer? It's the church. He says, they shall put you out of their synagogues or your meeting places for worship, which are your churches. Yes, the time comes that whosoever kills you will think that he does God service. So there's a time coming when the unrighteous in the house of God are going to rise up and they're going to kill the righteous. People that are in the church right now who, who profess to know Christ are going to manifest as enemies of Christ and enemies of the people of Christ. And in verse 3 it says, And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. So in the house of God, there is a mixed multitude, just as there was in the days of Moses, when Moses brought the people out of Egypt, and there were, there were people that were among the Hebrews that weren't Hebrews, that weren't submitted to the, to the work of God, to the holiness of God, to the love of God, but instead were, were submitted to their own righteousness, their own ideas of good, their own ideas of bad, their own ideas of truth. And so our large mega churches and our small assemblies have been infiltrated. In Matthew chapter 13 it says, while men slept, while people were unaware, while they were doctrinally sleeping, while they were in error, or while they didn't understand, or while they were too blind, or while they weren't being led by the Spirit of God, men crept in unawares. False brothers crept in unawares. Listen to this in Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Paul is exhorting the, the Ephesian church. And he says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he, talking about God, has purchased with his own blood, the blood of God, Jesus Christ. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. So he's saying that from the outside, wolves are going to come in and are going to devour the people of God. There are leaders in the house of God right now that are polluted with, the, with, with the, 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 the poison that they've gotten from seminary. Polluted with the poison that they've gotten from Bible college. Polluted with the poison that they've gotten from the secular humanistic world out there. Where the world is telling them how righteousness ought to be. Where they're judging the word of God based on the environment out there. It's saying that these people are wolves, they're murderers. They look at the church as a means of merchandise, as a means of getting rich, as a career. Many pastors and many leaders in churches right now are using the church as a means to get rich. 
And it says that they're not going to do what it takes to develop the believer. They're going to do what it takes to line their pockets, to fill their pockets, to glorify themselves. And this is going to cause death among the believers spiritually. They're not going to spare the, the flock. And verse 30 says, also of your own selves, he's talking to believers here, and he says that of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things like homosexuality is acceptable in the eyes of God, like abortion is acceptable in the eyes of God, like lying and greed is acceptable in the eyes of God, like secular movies and secular music is acceptable in the eyes of God, like People like Michael Jackson were really good people and at their death they, 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 they really represented what God wanted us to represent.